Private jets promise a level of service and convenience that the airlines can't match. So naturally, the very discerning travelers who use them will expect exceptional quality when it comes to the meals they enjoy en route. But while the best aircraft operators make this task look easy, the reality is far from that. It takes special expertise and preparation to make sure that passengers' palates enjoy a truly five-star experience at 40,000 feet. The average passenger really sees so little of all the wonderful things that go on, flight training, the insurance, the fuel companies, the FBOs. When they get on an airplane, they see really three things. They see the aircraft itself, the interior, exterior, the demeanor and appearance of the flight crew, and the food. And while we are a small part of a very big process, those three things can really spell the success of the mission. We are experts at providing the food exactly how it should be packaged, uh, with instructions on how to be reheated, and also instructions on how to plate it on the aircraft. Now one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot of work that goes into producing the food so that it is presentable, and those are all things that we take care of on our end for the flight attendants. Sometimes I talk to chefs when I'm interviewing them, um, and they're like, well, what do you mean you don't get to put it on a plate and make it look? Well, the end product may be on a plate and may be garnished and might not be by us, but we send them all the supplies that they need. And we'll send them the sauces, we'll send squeeze bottles and garnishes and everything so a flight attendant could finish it off themselves. Specialist caterers carefully plan every aspect of not only the food preparation, but how it will get onto the aircraft in perfect condition and be ready to serve. So true, you can go to Nobu and pick up fantastic sushi, but you'll be picking up Nobu in big gigantic containers that won't fit on board your airplane. And it'll go from the restaurant right to the aircraft, but it won't be maintained temperature. So there's a food safety issue, there's an integrity issue, there's an accountability issue. Once the order comes in, we begin production. It is given to our chef, it is given to our production staff, and uh, they begin working on the order and producing all the items that are being requested by the clients. There's sometimes that we may have to make shopping lists for specific items that are being requested, and sometimes there's things that we have in-house that we carry. But then at that point, the order is produced, it is expedited, put into boxes so that the client can receive it, and then it's delivered to the airport. We stress food safety and take it very seriously here. We make sure everything is properly cooled down to the right temperatures and blast chillers. And then once we get to the airport, it goes right into the refrigerator. We won't serve hot food because we have to make the delivery. It might be two hours out. Then it's gonna sit in a box. Who knows when they're actually gonna take it on board. There are so many different manufacturers out there and the manufacturers don't always have the same kinds of heating elements, the same kind of storage. And those are questions that we need to ask because you can serve the greatest meal in the world or provide it, but if there's no way to store it, nowhere to keep it refrigerated at a safe temperature and no way to heat it, and also no way to dispose of all that packaging material at the end of the day, then it's a failure for the flight. And for Nobu, great company, we actually pick up from them three times a day for customers here. We take that food, package it on trays that specifically go on board airplanes, pack it on ice and deliver it making sure that the integrity has stayed in place the whole time. They welcome us being the middle person because we take responsibility. Private jet passengers are somewhat notorious for being very demanding and even being somewhat unconventional in their tastes. So caterers generally have to be pretty flexible and good at lateral thinking. We can actually make anything that anyone asks at any time. So one of the main things that we look for our chefs whenever we look to hire someone is that they have to be extremely creative. And the reason is because they might be making Italian food one day, they might be making Indian food the next day. So they order anything and everything from hot dogs and chicken fingers for their children to foie gras and lamb chops and maybe even a dish that they might have had in the south of France somewhere and they want us to recreate it. We consider ourselves a full service and a one-stop shop. Um, part of the mantra that we walk around here saying all the time is, uh, you can't make any money saying no. So if a customer calls us and asks for something as eclectic and as strange as anything that could be, it's our job to find that particular product, to be almost like a concierge at a fine hotel. There's actually a lot of items that are requested that you would not expect us to be sourcing as a catering company. We get everything from iPhones to TVs to Christmas trees that have to be brought on, pl on the plane. And uh, we actually, the, with the Christmas tree, it's funny because we actually had to deliver it already set up so that it will be put on display with everything on it already, ornaments, everything. 
At the end of the day, we're providing a concierge service for our clients, and so we go out of our way to do everything we can to get anything that they want. There's one time where we actually had to go to a farm and pick up a bale of hay for a horse. Can you expect a horse to be on a play? That's something that we would never have thought of. And part of what we, what we provide our customers is discretion. Yes. And, 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 and as everyone in corporate aviation understands that there's that, that discretion, we don't really talk. But um, one customer that we always talk about in a, in, a, in, a, in a very respectful way, in a loving way actually, was when President Reagan had left office. President and Mrs. Reagan were very close friends with the Malcolm Forbes family. And at the time, the Forbes family had an airplane. It was green with, uh, in gold letters, capitalist tool across the, the tail. The Reagans had been given the airplane for two weeks to go to Russia so that President Reagan could go see Gorbachev. Uh, Secret Service and Reagan's folks had come to us and said, listen, uh, you do the capitalist tool, we want you to take these chests, and for two weeks we don't want to get any food in the Soviet Union at all. We'd like everything to come from this facility. We're going to have someone here to watch over you and make sure everything is secure. My brother and I had never had that challenge before, but we said, fine, we'll do soups, we'll do certain foods that will freeze and work better. So sure enough, we packed these two coffin-like cases, put them on board the capitalist tool, and for two weeks, my brother and I watched every day, we watched CNN to make sure that President Reagan was standing at the top of those air stairs, waving that he was healthy and had eaten food and not gotten sick, and it was a nice relief. And uh, the offshoot of that is that uh, after that, um, the Reagan Foundation in Simi Valley, once a month, got a bunch of frozen stuff from us. We would send foods and sauces and ship it out to Simi Valley to, to the Reagans. So they were a great customer, and uh, it's a fond memory of our, our company for that. Yeah.